Standard deviation. How is it calculated? Can I calculate it for a small set? Disclaimer. Standard deviation was built to be calculated by computers. It wasn't built to be calculated by hand. The only reason to look at calculated by hand is so that you have an understanding of what the computers are doing. Five steps. First step, find the mean. Deviations from the mean, that's distances of each of these data values from the mean. Square them. Find the mean of the squares. Take the square root. We're going to look at these steps one at a time. You absolutely are going to want a calculator in your hands while you're working on this. So, finding the mean involves adding up all the numbers and then dividing by how many numbers there are. 25 plus 42 plus 27 plus 33 plus 19 total 146. I'm going to divide this 146 by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because there's five numbers there. So my mean is 146 divided by 5, 29.2. If you're struggling at this point, you need to go back and work on an older topic. Work on mean before you come to standard deviation. You should be completely comfortable with calculating a mean before you even think about dealing with standard deviations. Okay, now for our purposes, because I am calculating this by hand, we're gonna round that, we're gonna call the mean 29. That's the first move, calculate the mean. Second move, deviations from the mean, means how far away are each of these guys from the mean? So. 25 is 4 away. 25 plus 4 is 29. 42 is 13 away. 42 minus 13 is 29. 27 is 2 away. 27 plus 2 is 29. 33 is 4 away. 33 minus 4 is 29. 19 is 10 away. Okay, that is deviations from the mean. How? What is the distance? between the mean and each of these numbers. Third step, square these. That will be a calculator operation. Unless you want to do it in your, in your head, if you're good with, if you've got all small numbers, all right, squaring just means multiply the value by itself. So we've got 4 times 4 is 16, 13 times 13 169, 2 times 2 is 4, already said that, 10 times 10 is 100. These are the squares of the deviations. Third step. Fourth step, take a mean of the squares. So, similar to my first step, I'm adding all of these together. And then I'm going to divide by 5 to get the mean of the squares. All right, 305 divided by 5 is 61. That's the mean of the squares. Last move. Take the square root. Take the square root. Right? That's the opposite of squaring. It's unsquaring. So, on my calculators, in order to get square root, you need this blue symbol above the square button. So, for my calculators, you'd be pressing second. All right, to get a square root symbol. Uh, if you're using a different calculator, if you're using a computer calculator, you're just looking for that guy. It looks a little bit like a long division symbol, but uh, square root. So for now, we're just going to type in square root of the number. 
hit enter, get an answer. Later in the year, we'll look at what exactly the calculator is doing when it's taking a square root. All right, so for us, square root of 61 is about 7.8. That is the standard deviation. Okay, once again, the steps are find the mean of your original numbers, green. Get the distance from each of your original numbers to the mean. You can use subtraction for that. Blue step. Multiply each of those distances by itself. Orange step. Take the mean of the squares. Last step. Square root. And you're going to use a calculator for that. I'm going to put another one up here. My suggestion is you hit pause as soon as you see it. Hit pause, try to do this one on your own, and then hit play and compare what I've done to what you've done. Check what you did against what I did. If there are discrepancies and you can't figure out why I did something differently, then you're gonna to have to ask the question in class, unless you don't know me, in which case, roll back to example one. That's standard deviation. What does it get used for? Standard deviation gets used when you have very large data sets large data sets to talk about how normal or abnormal a number, an individual number is within that data set. So, common question when you're dealing with standard deviations. How many standard deviations away from the mean is? Fill in this piece of data. Okay, 
Before you can ask that question, you need to know what the mean is. So that's either given to you or uh, calculated in some way, and you need to know what the standard deviation is. Again, it's either given to you or in some way it will be computed. So if I know that the mean is 14, I know that the standard deviation is 3, then somebody could ask me the question, how many standard deviations away from the mean is 20? Okay. All they're really saying is, if I start at 14 and I count by threes, how many times do I need to count before I reach 20 or before I pass 20? So 14 plus 3 is 17. 17 plus 3 is 20. The answer to this question is two standard deviations. Above the mean. Okay, 20 is two standard deviations above the mean. The mean is here. I counted by three twice. I counted by my standard deviation twice and reached 20. For our purposes, for our purposes, I'm not looking for exactness. So if we start at 14, Minus 3, we reach 11. Minus 3, we reached 8. Okay, that's kind of close to 7. If we subtract 3 more, we're down to 5. All right, so 7, somewhere in here, 7 is between 2 and three standard deviations below the mean. All right, again, if you take a class in statistics, they're gonna go a whole lot deeper into this. It tells us stuff. How many standard deviations away from the mean you are gives you some information about how, again, normal or abnormal that piece of data is for the given set of data. For our purposes, though, we're just touching on basics this year, so, can I calculate standard deviation with a small set of numbers? And can I, can I count by my standard deviation to say how many standard deviations away from the mean is such and such? That's what we're looking for.